Welcome to The Exchange, I'm Guy Schoen, bringing you the biggest news and interviews from all around the business world. Coming up on the show, we meet the women breaking barriers and inspiring a more diverse generation of business leaders to build a fairer future. Turning to tech in a bid to make the streets safe again, safety apps created by women are surging in popularity. And studies show that gender diversity leads to higher financial returns. We speak to the VC firm aiming to lift women entrepreneurs. Some of the most powerful and important positions in the world are being held by women. Ursula von der Leyen of the European Commission, Christine Lagarde at the European Central Bank, Janet Yellen as the US Treasury Secretary, and Ngozi okonjo Iweala at the World Trade Organization. Well, they're all part of a group showing that women can be as successful as their male counterparts in positions of power. Well, one of the ways more women can end up in decision-making roles is to boost female participation in traditionally male-dominated industries. In Europe, the organisation STEMETS is on a mission to inspire the next generation of women into careers in science, technology, engineering and maths by showcasing a diversity of people working in these sectors. The CEO and founder, Dr. Anne-Marie Emafedon, MBE, is an author and business leader. Well, the mathematician was also voted the UK's most influential woman in tech in 2020. And I'm delighted to say that Dr. Emafedon joins us now from London. Thanks for joining us on The Exchange. So tell us more then about the challenges facing women when it comes to careers in science and technology. And how hopeful are you that positive change can really happen? So there's quite a, quite a few things we need to do. I think the, the biggest lever that we have for changing this is, is social norms. And I think when we look at equal pay, you know, that, that came back in the 1960s, right? We had, at least here in the UK, the, the acts that, that came in to ensure that. And of course, STEM is one of those spaces that, you know, people are paid really well to, to work across lots of different STEM roles and STEM organisations. And so the underrepresented underrepresentation of women within STEM means that actually, you know, if we were better represented, we'd actually be much closer to that, to that pay parity. And so I think it's going to take a whole society, a whole change, a whole change in approach to say our social norms need have evolved, need to be reflected in the way that we we do what we do. Thank you, Dr. Emafedon. So in some sectors then, it seems those major societal shifts since the 1960s just haven't been reflected to the same degree in the boardroom. The advances in technology are also posing dangers to women worldwide. Whether it's trolling, having their personal details revealed, surveillance cameras, or tracking their location. Well, Emily Wither in London tells us how women are using the same technology to fight back. Yes, Guy, there's been a huge demand here in the UK for ideas to help women feel safe on the streets. And it's spurring women to come up with innovative tech-based solutions to protect others. So I previously had experience of sexual harassment when younger, out and about, and so I really understood that there was a need for something like our app. Emma Kay is the creator of WalkSafe, the fastest growing safety app in the UK. The former beautician is aiming to make the app available across all of Europe and the US. We use real police crime data and we're the only app out there that does that. WalkSafe received more than $135,000 in initial funding from an angel investor and to keep the app free and available to all, the tech firm is now in its second round of funding. Emma's app encourages people to take precautionary measures to avoid being in harmful situations. Meanwhile, Uta de Vere has developed an app that allows people to react quickly if they find themselves in danger. I received emails from my children's school to be more vigilant on our way to and from school because some of the mothers have been marked. And so this triggered my idea. The hands-free voice-activated app is triggered by a panic scream or even a whisper of the key word. One scream. Sending an SOS to the people on the user's emergency database. OneScreen recently launched paid subscriptions and is seeking investment through a US-based startup accelerator program. While critics have been quick to point out women's safety issues can't be solved by technology alone, more clicks to download safety apps is showing that it is playing a role in making women feel safer on the streets. For other women-led startups, it's not been easy to secure funding. 
While there have been efforts and campaigns to try and narrow this financing gap, only 2% of venture capital goes to startups led by women. That's despite studies showing that gender diversity leads to higher financial returns. Maria Velasaurus is the founding partner of Steel Sky Ventures, an all-female VC fund investing in companies that improve access to women's healthcare. Here's her take on what companies like Steel Sky can do to lift female entrepreneurs. Less than 12% of women venture capitalists are out there, and we can't fund every single women's health company. And so I think what we're finding is that the people with the money is reflective of the solutions that you see in the market. If we change that mix and we diversified who is actually given the power to allocate capital, I think we'll start to see a shift in the types of companies that get developed and the types of founders that we see receive funding. I think success will continue to be get success. And I think 2022 is going to be a major year in women's health care. Thanks, Maria. A major year ahead then for investments in women's healthcare. Now we've put a different spin on our regular feature business in 60 seconds. Start the clock. Despite frustration from Ursula von der Leyen, the European Commission president, that an EU deal on rules for women in boardrooms has taken too long to be agreed, Europe has seen progress with a number of high profile leaders at the helm of iconic organisations. Norway was the first European country to introduce boardroom quotas in 2008. France currently has the strongest female representation in the boardrooms of the biggest listed firms at 45%. Well, according to the Harvard Business Review, the female economy pumps $15 trillion into global earnings every year. Women continue to represent a massive driver of consumer spending despite COVID hitting the labor force. But figures from the United Nations reveal that globally women only make 77 cents for every dollar earned by men. And despite all the campaigns, the UN still predicts that at the current rate of progress, there will be no equal pay until 2069. Made it, five seconds to go. So there's clearly more to be done to help women break the glass ceiling in whichever field they're in. The pandemic may have rolled back gender equality, but there's no doubt that it gives governments and organizations all the more reason to ramp up efforts to empower women in order to build a more sustainable and fairer future. And the more women emerge into positions of power, the more decisive the action and the greater the returns for all of us. Well, that's all we have time for on this edition of the show. Thanks for watching. Please do check out euronews.com for all your latest business news and join us again next time on The Exchange.